In the age ago, in a time now almost forgotten, heroes of the realm were abundant. Adventure, spirits, and wonder blew through the skies and over its lands, as easy as a breeze in the spring afternoon. Memories forgotten, the great heroes of the realm vanished, and their deeds became myth. No one can say for certain where they, where or why they left. Perhaps it was for greater treasure across the seas. Others say they went to fight the gods of the heavens and hells themselves. Of course, the common people remained. The farmers, craftsmen, merchants, the men and creature of the earth. And from deep beneath the earth, the darkness saw this abandonment. Far in the crust, the, the darkness grew and spread. It sent its minions out, gathering and pillaging, spreading forth its all-consuming will. It tore down, burned, and defiled the temples of the gods that the people had forgotten. The heroes never returned, and evil subdued the righteous. Empires were broken, kingdoms became vassals, and lords became serfs. The darkness crawled over the mountains and through the land and into the air, and no one could escape its tyranny. The people scattered and broken. The monsters and beasts had dominion over the world once again. Do you feel it? Something strange. Something I've not felt in a long time. It's like the wind rustling the leaves in autumn. Something familiar. What is your character thinking? I'm just wondering how I can solve this problem and, and bring the heroes back. Well, you are kind of a hero in your, your, yourself, or at least you think you are. I think I just want to make the world a better place by killing some monsters that don't belong here. You've been walking through the forest for days now. And you're used to it, though. going to change it. You hired, you know, the fresh, brisk morning air comes off the mountains. The point robins are chirping. You hired two Azrai scouts to help you hunt down the monster that's been killing the farm sheep. The farmers hired you, and when you looked at those sheep, the bite marks were unusual, large, and help was needed. Half up front, half when the job was done. That's what you told the peasant folk who tried to hide whatever grain the irks don't steal from them. Shipping, you know, shipping it down to Stormbrook. That's where you were going, but you got sidetracked. The money was too good for this job. Van Richten, your teacher and adopted father taught you well. When you don't know enough or the fight is too hard, you need to get help. Otherwise, it might cost you your other leg. So one thing we didn't say is that your character has a prosthetic leg. Did I tell you that? No, you didn't. That's freaking awesome, though. So like you, you, you've hired, you know, you're, you're, you actually, you were fighting a monster. You could decide which one in your own backstory. And it took your mm -hmm. leg off before. In this actual backstory, um, Esmeralda lost her leg fighting a, you know, a beast. And before the, she was transformed, you know, the wound was cauterized and they, she hired one of the best tinkerers, gnomish tinkerers to actually rebuild her leg. And it's kind of like from the, you have the kneecap up, but below that kneecap, your cap, you know, your calf, all the mm -hmm. way down your foot is missing. Okay. 
Now there are, you've heard of powerful magic that maybe could restore your leg if you really want to, but you also obviously keep like things in that leg, like mm -hmm. probably like spare lock picks. So if you ever get captured or something like that, you have a way to like get out. You know, your character is very street smart, very clever. She's literate. Many people in Zen aren't, but Van Richten taught you well from a young age. And you hired these two Azrai. Azrai are wood elves. Their names are Deziko and oh. Yefemeth. And I'm going to yeah, show you. Yep. Zico. And I'm going to show you some pictures of them. So I go into World Anvil and I try to load up all the pictures. So let me pull it up real quick. And Deziko says, Look here, my lady. The tracks are bunched up here a little more. He's like your tracker. He's been up tracking the beasts. This man, you see him? Yep. What do you say? Say, um, okay. And so which direction does this lead off into? South. South. He gets up and starts walking. Now these Azrai are kind of like you. They're very quiet in the, in the, in the forest. They almost don't make a sound. They've been you've been tracking this beast for the last day, mm. and you're coming it up. You know you're coming up to. What do you want to say? Do you want to say anything to these people? You've hired these people. Okay. You're pretty wealthy yourself, so you need you know you needed some help to hunt this beast down to track the beast. Sometimes. Are they fighters as well? I mean, it looks like uh, Zico has a bow and everything like that. So he's a fighter, and the other one is a caster of some kind a bender yes, in the world that's called bending which is basically a magic user so they bend bend reality to the will of the the caster but the azrai are they live in the woods a lot deep in the woods now their people were displaced from the great veil vale many years ago so many took ships south from the continent of Orin, where you're at you've been traveling west for weeks you know, towards Stormbrook, you know, just hunting and everything like that. And you've hurt, you're trying to actually find out what happened to Van Richten. You lost touch with them a little bit and you're kind of wondering what happened to him. Now the, these yeah. two uh, wood elves, wood elves mate for life typically. These, these they're a husband and wife. Uh, can you tell how close it is? When was the last time I went through here? Um, you want to tell or you want to ask Tzeko? Uh, can I ask Tzeko? Sure. Go ahead. Ask him. Tzeko, how uh, how recent were these tracks made? Uh, can you tell how close this beast may be? It's like they're, they're fresh. They must be close. Maybe less than an hour or two ago. The beast maybe was through here or something. Children of the beast, maybe. Be careful. Be How quiet. many? I don't know. Many tracks. Maybe four or five. And he points out and he's like, takes his fingers and he's like, you see, this is when they walk. And the spacing of the things, mm -hmm. spacing of it, he's like, that's when they, they're running. He's trying to teach you a little bit of the survival of how they do it. And the tracks and the fresh mud, you know, along this sort of trail in the, in the wood. Uh, it, uh, y Yosefeth? What is... It's her, her, the wife is kind of following behind you a little bit. Yeah. She says, yes. What's, can you, can you tell with any of your casting if, if there's anything magic about these creatures? Can you sense anything? She says, the woods has many bendings. There's much magic. The bite marks on those sheep that you told us about and you showed us. There has to be some strange evil magic. Evil magic. Okay. Let's start heading south. Be Both careful. Both of you stay b behind be me, flank me on either side, and let's start moving. Okay, so you want them to kind of, so you want to be in front and you want to that. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're kind of walking through the woods, we're just assuming that you're kind of moving stealthily, right? You're yes. coming up. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to load up our first map. I still have you blindfolded, right? Uh, no, I'm not blindfolded right now. Oh, shoot. 
I'll just I'll look over at the screen. It's loading up at eight percent. So usually I, I try to blindfold you when I'm loading a map in or something. I'm setting the stage for something. So you guys are slowly coming up. It says you're at eight percent. So it's I get, can see the map I'm, right now. I'm getting the scrolling wheel of death. Oh, it says finish building. Great, fantastic. So um, let me uh, actually hide you a little bit. Oh, it says it's on. It says, are you still blind? You sure you're not blindfolded? Yep, I'm, bl I'm blindfolded now. Now okay. I am. So I'm actually going to show you some basic rules. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to put down what they call fog of war. Just give me one minute. Okay. Let's go to the two players plus tabletop. Great. And let me put down a fog of war. So your character model, um, even if you create one in Zoom, I'm uh, oh, sorry, in a Hero Forge, has um, a field of view attached to it. Yeah. I just need to pull out the models. I think it does at least. Let me see toggles. No, this one doesn't. So let me make sure. So um, you were orange, correct? So I, we yes. play a little bit hard, more hardcore with the rules. Your field of view, I changed it from everyone's model just to you now. So you only see with your model. But I give you a reveal range of 60 feet, which is 12 inches, um, which is your dark vision if you think about it, right? So I'm just looking at it now in game and it looks great. I also give you a real deal of height because sometimes the models when I load them in, this is just some of the technical stuff. That's why we do this pregame too, is mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I load you in the model height, it's just how the fog of war is revealed. It's kind of strange. I'm also gonna get out the two models of the two Azrai that are with you. Now, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you ever played World of Warcraft but there's a lot of World of Warcraft models that I need to find them. I'm gonna unblindfold you now. Okay. And um, this is where you're at in the map. Do you see it? Mm. The blank spot up there and they're kind of away from the side, yes. side of the table. Yes. You're coming up, you see like a carriage of some kind. It's abandoned, worn down. The tracks, you know, mm -hmm. led here a little bit. Do you wanna search it? Yes. When you search it, you make what, if you're actively searching for something, mm -hmm. so if you're looking around, that's a perception check. When you're actively searching, it's called a uh, investigation check. So I'm just trying to cover all the basic rules and stuff with you as well. So okay. I like to do a perception check then. Well, a percep so that, that's one of the kind of more confusing rules in D&D here is a perception check is where you're looking around. So you want to look around first before you start yes. searching? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just around the whole area before I search, um, just in case there's anything. Some, a trap. Besides the, yeah, yeah. So um, here's another thing too. If you want to take time, there's something, there's another rule called a passive, there's three scores you can do for passive rolls, which automatically okay. guarantee you a roll of a 10, which is essentially the average roll plus whatever modifier you have. But it assumes like you're just taking time. You're kind of like searching around. If you want to just do it quickly in a round, I roll for it. You can always switch back. And those three roles are perception, investigation, and insight when you're talking with someone. Like if you're mm -hmm. talking with someone for a minute, I just assume you have an, a 10 on them, especially if you like have high charisma, you can start to like read people. Sorry, go ahead. So uh, what do you, you want me just to roll? Yes, a roll. Do you hear me do the roll there? Yep. Did you hear that roll? Yeah, That's I did. me rolling on D&D &D Beyond on your character okay. sheet. I'm going to tell you what I rolled. I rolled a 19 plus 3, 22. The wagon must have been here for days, you know, or w weeks or months. You just looking around, it doesn't, you don't hear or see anything unusual. Now, see, what I'm saying is I'm giving you a result, but in the future mm -hmm. we play on more like a hard mode. You don't know what I rolled. But I, but you would tell me like I would. If you did you see something strange, if there is something strange there, you would see it. All right. So now I'd like to uh, just search inside the wagon. 
whatever was in here, you know, there's a famine going on throughout Orin right now. Whatever was in here, so I'm gonna roll an investigation check. Okay. So that's based on your intelligence, which is minus one. You don't really see anything here. This, whatever was in here, somebody got up in a hurry and left days ago. And uh, the Azrai man, the hunter says, stop lingering, let's get out of here. So I'm guessing south is straight in front of me. Yeah, you can go that way. What? It's like that way is south. Now I can be more technical about it mm -hmm. if you want me to, and I can just throw the compass down there for you like that. Okay. To give you a sense of direction. Okay. Uh, so, um, Zico, uh, you said the tracks are heading south? We can go this way. You want to lead? Yes, I'll lead. Follow behind me. Okay. Talk a little bit to. Uh, now you see the you see the fog of war is revealing itself, mm -hmm. right? They're following behind you. Am I just constantly doing a perception? I'm assuming you're taking your time. I'm assuming mm -hmm. you're taking your time, which means you have a passive perception score of thirteen. All right. Let's go back to the trees. And it looks like you're coming up to a small Oops. abandoned village. That's okay. Let's move mm -hmm. your characters up here. Oop. You're coming up to like a small abandoned village of some kind. Um, you know, and he moves over here and these models are really big actually. I need to shrink them down to size. There we go. So they're just checking it out. It looks like there was a well, you know, someone lived here, thatch houses, roofs. Can I search? Uh, you want to do a perception the... check first? Yes, I'll do a perception check first. Okay. You don't see anything unusual. All right. Can I do an investigation check on the two houses and crates and barrels and everything? You just want to quickly do it or you want to take your time? Um, I'll quickly do it for the stuff outside and can I take my time? with the two houses? It's pretty obvious. Whoever was here again just got up and left. And you think to yourselves, you just think briefly to yourself, the monster that maybe that's been terrorizing the area, people just, they're scared. They're not going to live here. So again, someone probably did live here a while ago. Maybe, you know, there's the smoke in the well hasn't been used. There's no signs of activity. Someone was here, but they left. And... It's probably because of the monster or monsters. Uh, can I see any tracks? I have of the to. Monster? So you do have survival, which is kind of cool as a skill. So you've hired another guy who has maybe a higher survival score than yours. Mm -hmm. You kind of know how to track things yourself, having been in the woods, right? Pretty cool, huh? And part of your character mm -hmm. sheet. You see the tracks, they head south of some, you know, it's smaller animals of some kind, but um, they're pretty large. Do you want to have them follow you south? Yes, keep following me south. So I'm going to move your character model but and I'm going to move you up to the next sort of event. So you're just slowly moving south and you hear mm -hmm. growling. And right, when I hear growling, I stop. And can I do a stealth check now? To so what we're going to do, just to simplify things, is I'm going to just right. move you over here a little bit, and I'm going to move these guys. They, as soon as they start hearing stuff, you're like, you know, get into the bushes or whatever, and they kind of get into position, and you hear the growling of wolves. Up ahead, you see a graveyard. You know, now you're not moving, really, and mm -hmm. um, you see a bunch of wolves, and I'm going to put these wolves out now. And they must be digging up some of the graves. And the uh, you see one of the wolves here. They're digging up the graves. And they haven't... Um, they're just chewing down on whatever flesh. Maybe a freshly buried corpse of some kind. I'm going to allow you. So this is what we call... There's no such thing technically as a surprise round, okay? Okay. But this is 
a theoretically a surprise round. Now, how surprise, how like stealth and surprise work is if I see you, or if I know about you, you don't get a surprise round. It's just like you come up and you don't get a free action on me, because he's he, especially if a player character or a non-player character feels threatened by you. They're not just letting their guard down. They're like, unless you really start, and they could see like, oh, I'm trying to make a stealth roll. Well, they'll see you try to make a stealth roll. They'll see you trying to hide on them. So then they, their guard is up. So it's again, it's up to a little bit of interpretation by yours truly. But like in this instance, now wolves, as you know from your survival, from Rand Van Richten's teaching, they do have advantage on stealth. But you know they're just they're devouring you know these things in there. You know they're just devouring something, and just three of these packs of wolves are just munching away on some of the French freshly dug up corpse. What do you want to do? Uh, would I have known from the bites on the sheep that the the bites were these wolves, or no? Would I have not known that? I'll make a survival check for you. You don't know. Okay. Um. When I so with my surprise, with my uh, preemptive attack, can I tell the other two to attack with me as well, so all three of us attack before they notice it? I will allow you to get one round essentially so how combat works i don't know how much you've read or how much you know mm -hmm. or how it all works you it's get a, each person. you get a move action mm -hmm. and a, an attack really and that's kind of how D, D beyond uses it to kind of help you out right um mm -hmm. as far as attacking so you can move up to your move speed which is 30 feet or six inches so let me show you something really cool hit the f4 mm -hmm. key F4. F4 four is the ruler. If I click your character and I measure it out, see I'm about seven inches away. Okay. So to act, for you to get up and attack them, now you do have a short bow, so you could fire mm -hmm. your short bow at them too. To, dr awesome. to draw and drop a weapon is a free action, so it doesn't cost you an action to do it. You can just quickly draw your weapon out if you want to. If you want to just sit there and the thing. So right now you can't technically reach them in the surprise round. Okay. Can I, so can I tell uh, Zekiel and his wife, I'm going to move, uh, you two stay here, and I'm going to try to flank them a little bit from the side. When I attack, you guys attack as well. You're just kind of hand signaling them, so you're not really mm -hmm. saying that. You're just like, you know, you're gesturing to him that you guys have been practicing, so you're, he understands you, so. I'm gonna allow you to get close enough to actually make a move and attack if you want to, without using your short bow. Well, I'm gonna use my short bow. You want to just be closer? To, okay. Yeah, I want to move to right there to draw the wolves away from those two. Now the wolves will make a perception check to see if they notice you versus your stealth roll, which I will now roll. So I roll it twice because you have advantage. They don't notice you. Okay. So now I would like to draw my short bow and fire at this wolf. Okay. And I, if I hit, here's another kind of cool thing I can do. If I hit the F4 key again, what? and I just click it once, it puts that little arrow there. Cool, huh? Okay. And it uses your orange so I can kind of know who you are too. If you okay. want to point to something. Uh, roll an attack. Now with the short bow, you get plus five to attack. So I'll let you change it as well. So I just have to unlock that and change it. Or it's okay, you can just roll it and we can just minus one from the roll. Okay, uh, I'll yeah. just roll then. Or you can just, yeah, there you go. Let me see okay. what. So let's change up the music as the battle is now commenced. Oh, actually, we're in the, pr again, surprise round. I'll change the music after this. Um, so you rolled at an 11. Mm -hmm. um, I. But since you're um, surprising, I'm gonna I will give you a little bit of a bonus. Let me take a look here. What? You uh, draw back your bow, you knock the arrow, you fire, it lands right in the side of the wolf, roll for damage. Now a short bow does D6 plus three. You rolled mm -hmm. a, so let's just say you, okay, yeah. So, so do you for, want me to roll a D6? Yeah, so you can just roll a D6 here, right? All right, so. And guess what, you can also save that roll, D6 plus three, right? So. Click D6. back to click F1 again. So you get out of ruler mode. Uh, 
That's one. Okay. So, so hold on. Six? Come up here for a second. Let me just show you this real quick. Okay. Let's just kind of make this easier. I'll save a roll for you. So I'm gonna click the D20. Mm -hmm. And for your short bow, it's a six. I'll hit save. So that's your attack with the short bow. And then your short bow does D6 plus three. So I'll, I'm gonna clear this roll actually. Select the D6, add three, and hit save. So this is your bow attack. So why what? don't you click, you can just hit roll if you want to. Oh, we rolled two dice, so hit clear. It's okay. Click or, that. yep, and roll. And then roll? Yep. You do nine damage. The wolf, you strike right into the juggler. Plus, it's a sneak attack, so you get to add another d6. So, we actually should have kept the other roll. So, add another so flat d6. So, it's just a regular d6 roll with no modifier. Perfect. So, you actually did nine plus five, 14 damage. The wolf. The arrow strikes right into the neck, neck of the wolf. As the wolves, the other two wolves are kind of starting to turn around again, they're surprised. I will roll an attack with the other guy. Uh, he also hits with his bow. And he does six points of damage. Here's a kind of the cool thing as I use the HP cap, this HP token out here. Okay. So this wolf, I delete the model when it drops. This wolf right here is taken six points of damage Oop. like that so you can just put it like that the other wolf is startled the the druid azrai druid has not done anything she's kind of holding her action just seeing what's happening she's assessing the situation and now we roll for initiative and i change the music <laughs> so Try to get you in the mood a little bit more. <laughs> no, I was I'm digging the forest though. That's awesome. I'm glad you like it. It's great. Okay, so um, now we are going to we roll for initiative, and so I have hostile group one at plus one. So I just I just hit roll for initiative. Hostile group goes last. So see, I'm going to go over the initiative counter over here. All right, yep. You're up top plus your group, mm -hmm. your party members. So you they're going to go right after you. So what do you want to okay. do now, Esmeralda? Um, I I'm going to take so I can movement action bonus action, right? It's well, at, you can actually do any of those in any order. Okay, I'm going to move to right here. Okay, you get a little closer. Your uh, ball, bow is still out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to You've fire emerged from the shadows. with my bow again at the closest wolf. Yep, that's taken some damage. Roll to hit. Yep. So you can use the the pre-made yep. rollers we made just to help it out. Roll. Oh, that is a hit. Your arrow okay. strikes right. into the back of the wolf as it begins to just turn around and notice what's going on. But you've gotten the jump on him, and the wolf getting struck by two arrows now. I'm gonna roll this kind of this cool little die to help oh, we don't lock out. <laughs> um, you hit the the stomach of the wolf, the second arrow, and the wolf dies. It lets out a painful yelp and dies. Uh, now this um, Dizco will now attack. He hits as well. And he does five points of damage. The wolf's turn now. He sees you, right? Mm -hmm. Especially now that you've come out of the shadows. Now, next level, you can make another action to hide again. Mm -hmm. If you're already hidden, you can hide again, especially if you're in the shadows. Like you're already hidden behind a tree. Okay. You have to just make another stealth roll so it comes up to attack you. I rolled a 13 against your AC, which is 15. So the wolf tries to bite you. It tries to latch onto your leg, but doesn't penetrate the armor. Okay. It is now your, uh, I would it's like your turn. I would like to take out my uh, rapier and attack with that. So you drop your bow. You just, you draw your rapier out, which is a finesse weapon. 
and you step, you kind of dodge, and then you reattack the wolf. You hit. What? Stabbing the left front paw of it for six damage, and the wolf dies. It falls right as it falls forward onto you. That your blade goes deep into it and must have went right through the heart of the wolf. As an experienced monster hunter, you know you. This is easy work for you. Easy. Good job, guys. Uh, can I now do a uh, look around at what they were gnawing at? Yep. Let me just change the music real quick. Yeah, you you search through the bodies. It was some bones with some fr it's some like decayed meat, rancid, mm -hmm. uh, covered with maggots, disgusting. Um, you know, you appear to be in a, a crypt. You know, you're kind of walking around. Some of the other bodies have already been dug up. They are already defiling the graves, and you hope that I'll make a religion check. Even though you're not proficient into it, I'll make a roll anyways. You hope that the last rites were written read to them as so they can cross into the afterlife beyond limbo. What do you do? So as I look closer at these wolves I've slain, can I tell now if they were these beasts that have been attacking? This the, the bite marks, you look at kind of the jaws, they have probably like rabies. These are wild wolves. They probably were terrorizing it, but not to the degree of, not the type of calculation. So probably not, you, the hunt is still on. And then uh, as you're doing this, uh, Disco says, the tracks lead this way, and he points south. He points south to a cave. Hey, do you want to search the, anything else? Um, no, I'm more focused on getting to this beast. Okay, we'll just say you you're continuing here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move your character kind of the next spot just to show you right. a little bit more. Now, not every map is going to be this detailed. You know, some of this will have theater of the mind. It seems like there's an abandoned watch post here. And you see the entrance to some type of cave, you know, here. It's off the map, of course. But okay. there's two looming statues, broken. They must have been guarding something. Maybe this was an old dwarven cave or a gnomish cave contracted before the war, abandoned now. You know, you see some old rails that came out of it where they maybe carted off um, metals and things like that. And Devin and them follow behind. And uh, Devin says, this, this must be the beast lair. The tracks lead right into this. Mm -hmm. Be careful, everyone on their guard. And they're still with me? They're right behind you. They're walking very quietly. Every one of you, you're like barely making a sound while you walk through the woods. And we are going to load up the next map as you walk in. Sweet. Yep. You're like a dripping in the cave. You know, the stalagmites dripping slowly. You hear movement up ahead, but you don't know what it is yet. Um, I'm going to have you, I'll just make a perception roll for you. It sounds like a girl crying. What do you want to do before I turn on the map? Uh, I look at Des and his wife. I signal, follow me. We're going in. Okay, they go in. I, I'm just, I messed up because I think I deleted their models <laughs> real quick. So I'm just gonna replace their models with these tokens, I think. Okay. So I messed up. 
I don't see where I put your bag at. I got so many freaking bags back here. So I'm going to take off the map thing here real quick. go there's like tattered bones and things like that and a girl in a clothing worn clothing rags is up ahead i'm just going to represent them as two tokens for now the wife is outside i'm um, just kind of guarding the gate making sure nothing's happening and this girl is weeping kind of crying she's like mommy went away Mommy's gone. So we're at the entrance over here. Do you see her now? You see uh, her, right? I see the map. Yeah, you're right here. Do you see this? Yes, I see the map. Um, yep, this is the cave. Okay, and are we right here? Nope, you're right here. Do you see your character right there? Oh. No. And I put down us the black token. I'll put the white token out. Are you having problems seeing it? Yeah, I don't see. I see the map. I don't see the tokens. Okay, though. one second. Hold on here. How's that? Okay. Did okay. I delete it now? Yeah. Now I see it all. Okay. Perfect. It was just the fog of war. Sorry about that. Yeah. So now you're in the cave. This token is. <laughs> Because I messed up is the uh, the elf, the hunter. So he's like right behind you as you come through this small cave entrance. And you see the girl. She's up here crying. Uh, does she? Can I tell if she sees us? Oops. You're moving stealth, so I'm gonna make a stealth advantage stealth roll for you. So I rolled twice because it's two d twenty. You're qu you're quiet as a cat. You don't, you're not, oh, the, your footsteps are making no sense. You can just tell me what you want to do and I can move uh, your model if you want to. What are you doing? Is your sword uh, drawn? I would like to move along the wall right here. Okay. And the then, cave is dark, but with your dark vision, you can see perfectly. It's all black and white. Okay. There's, uh, uh, there, there's like, you look around a little bit and there's like bones and other cloths, you know, it smells foul. Something is wrong. And the girl is wearing, she's dirty, um, crying, you know, and she's looking over maybe something, a body of some kind. And, you know, it's, stra it's strange. But, you, you know, you're on guard. Is your sword drawn? Yes, I draw my sword. You don't draw it. Is it already out as you go into the cave? I'm assuming yes, you're Yeah, drawn. it's already out. Yeah, it's already out. Okay. Um, I come within... So each yeah, inch right is there. five feet. If we do like a measurement, you're two inches away. So you're 10 feet away from the girl. Okay, right. And you're moving right. so quietly. The, I, your, ma your magic boots that from the elven kind that you mm -hmm. bought years ago, just you're magically moving, you know, just quick. Would I, would I know if Diz could um, be able to see into the cave as well? Does he's he looking at you. I mean, he's looking at you. He's just kind of assessing the situation. He's on the side yeah. there. Just being careful. I tell, I hold up my hand to tell him to stay at the entrance of the cave. He's, so he's, 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 uh, he's blocking the entrance. He's going to move in slightly. Uh, and I'm going to just, this, oh uh, boy. This. So he's close enough. He could shoot. Yeah. I'm going to put out another token real quick for the wife. She's actually right here too. So she's kind of guarding the entrance. But she's, they're, kind of, they're on guard. The, his bow is already drawn. The arrows are knocked, just like in his picture. Uh, I attempt to speak common to the little girl. I say, are you okay? Why are you in this cave? One second. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was the music. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I had some alarm on my phone. I know, I'm breaking the immersion hard, aren't I? Um, sorry about that. I was like, oh, it's it. Oh, my gosh. I took a power nap yesterday, and I didn't want to, uh, mm. you know, wake up. 
I'm gonna play the music for this girl. Okay. She just turns over as she's talked to her. She's like, she's like, mommy left a long time ago. I don't know where she went. She comes a little closer to you. And she's like, I need help. She gets right up close to you. Why do you need help? Okay, she's like, Mommy left a long time ago. Can I do a perception? Can I tell this is just a normal little girl or? What I do I is I do a, I do an insight check. Mm -hmm. So you haven't talked to her long enough to get an automatic 10. Okay. Everything I'm saying is happening. There's nothing super strange or unusual. But you think to yourself, like, what is a girl doing in a cave like this? She sees your sword drawn. She's like, why are you, don't hurt me. Where, where do you live? She's like, she, you start to look at her. She looks up at you as you ask her where she lives. She's like, and suddenly she starts to transform. So you've lost your surprise round. She transforms, her hair just starts forming off her clothes, rip off. And she turns into a, a large werewolf. You know what it is though. I have to reduce the model, obviously it's too big. But she transforms into, she's no longer a girl anymore. She's a man size, a large man. You you just quickly assess what's happened. This woman must have been bit, or this girl must have been bit by a vamp, uh, not a vampire, a werewolf. And you know, now we roll initiative after I change the music. <laughs> Not the same anymore for the werewolf. <laughs> Even with all my monitors, it's hard for me to manage, micromanage everything. So um, we roll initiative now. And I just roll it. You <laughs> are, what is it? Last. Esmeralda's last. So you rolled a three, yep. so the werewolf gets to jump on you. As she's transformed, you're totally caught off by surprise by this. And you think to yourself, damn, I knew I should, something was wrong with this. And um, here we go. The werewolf attacks. Does it hit? It has two attacks. Okay. So the second one hits. You take four damage. Its claws come out and start ripping at you. One of them, you quickly dodge as you see it transforming in front of you. The other one comes up and belts you in the stomach. It is now right. your turn. I'm going to swing at it with my rapier. Go ahead. Boom. You cut it. You swing, you dodge out of the way, right across it, and I'm gonna put out seven hit points. Let me get out one of the tokens. Uh, and for my bonus action, can I swing at it again? With you, my... you don't get a bonus action, okay. really. Now, if you had a, like, when we read up the rules for on dagger, okay. dagger stuff, um, let me take a look here just on your character sheet really quick. Okay. So, um, I'm going to, so, like, I had two daggers attached. Mm -hmm. So, let me unequip one of your daggers. I'll re equip it. Action. Let me look it up real quick. I usually don't like looking up rules and things. You can also throw the dagger. Mm -hmm. You don't add any ability modifier to the damage, damage of the bonus action. Unless so that modifier just... is negative. So you just roll it with a D4 damage, roll to, roll to hit. Uh -huh. So you can just roll a regular DC. Yeah, it's just you get plus five. So it's just like your bow, right? So I just roll a normal D4? Just mm -hmm. roll, what'd you roll? Well, you had to roll D4? to hit. You got to uh... roll to hit first, right? Because you're swinging with your dagger now. That's oh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, so it's just a D20, right? 
D20. Because there's no modifiers? D20, it's just like your, uh, yeah, it's D20 uh, plus five. So I, we messed okay. up. This should be a plus five. <laughs> and you want to clear and save it, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, your dagger, you, you're just moving very quickly, and you, you're you slicing it, and then you slice at its Achilles heel. Roll D4 damage, but no bonus, right? So you don't get mm -hmm. an attack bonus with it. Four additional damage. So you nice. do max damage. Your dagger cuts it, and this wolf... How much do we do? Now it has 11 points of damage, I think. Okay. And then... Uh, I can still do a movement, correct? Uh, yes, yeah, since you're right on top of it, but it, you can't disengage with it. So next, I can't dis okay. So, so I think I next is that right? Because so. next level, I think you get that action, right? The next level is yes. When I get the, um, I automatic like they can't attack me because I dodge or whatever. Okay. When I disengage, okay. it is so now. I will stay there. Great. Now it's my attack. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a hit. He shoots a bow and arrow as it comes out, and he's kind of shocked to himself. He is not a professional monster hunter like you, so he looks shocked and surprised of what's happening. Um, he attacks and does um, three more points of damage to it. The werewolf is not bloodied yet. Okay. And uh, she comes in and she casts um, an attack on him. A spell attack and let me see the AC of the creature magic bolts fly out from her fingertips as you hear the incantations happen an additional seven damage there you go it is now your turn oh it's my turn uh, the werewolf yeah, you're right. So what I'm going to do, see, I just, I'm going to move the initiative counter back up, and now it's round number two. You see that? Kind of cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to attack with the werewolf. One claw comes out. You deflect it with your rapier. The other claw comes at you and barrels down on you and hits. You take two damage. Two damage. Uh huh. So now I am going to. And you hear the the werewolf as you're deflecting and fighting close guy. It growls right in your face. I'm going now, to. Now normally, uh, we kind of made a mistake. Let me take a look. Right. Werewolves, as you know, have damage immunities. So like your dagger that you stabbed with, mm -hmm. it's not silvered or magical. It actually does no damage. Okay. So, but I'll allow it though for now. Just in the future, we won't. As she was tr finishing her transformation, you were able to get one dagger attack off of her before she okay. finished her transformation. So, Your well, my, my rapier still does damage though. Of course. That's why you bought it to fight these monsters like this. Because you know, a lot okay. of monsters are magical. So, you have okay. to have a magical, like in The Witcher, he has a silver sword to fight mm -hmm. monsters. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. I'll do. Um... Attack her. Um, now, as in her werewolf form, she has no armor on. So she's just okay. brute strength, rippling muscles covered with fur. And you sh your rapier, your finesse weapon, you're realizing your dagger is now worthless. You just quickly sheath it and you kind of repost and stab it. Okay. In the. Okay. In the right, in her right hand, as she's. The claws coming at you, the, the, your rapier goes right through her hand. Okay. Well, for damage. 11 points. Okay, and then for my movement, I'm also going to use my bonus action to disengage. And I'm going to move uh, behind this rock. So as a bonus action, you actually can't disengage. I, right? Uh, it says the cunning action. You can take a bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. Is that so? You actually have that right at level yes, two. I See, have we that, made that yeah. mistake. We made. I, oh, well, okay. I made that mistake. I should have known better. Well, I didn't know since I used my bonus action to attack. I couldn't use the disengage part. Of no, you can as a bonus action. So even okay. in the previous one, you could have rehidden while you were in the in the bush too. Okay. So you can actually okay. rehide. I just have to roll it. So disengage is automatic. 
So it doesn't okay. provoke an act, attack of opportunity, but that's you just move behind this, and mm -hmm. the werewolf is just out in the open. I'm going to attack with it um, with the, another bow. The bow attack. And the bow flubs. The arrows, you see here, ricochet within the cave. The wife, she's ca casting an incantation spell, and she does hit. Magical bolts fly out, another three damage. The werewolf is bloodied. The damage nice. is starting to take on it. Now the counter I thought may go past 30, I guess not. So I'm just gonna delete it. So it has 33 damage. Okay. What do you do? Oh, and it actually- That's so, a werewolf? Yeah, let me move the counter back. So then we move the round down one. The werewolf comes around. And coming at you because you didn't rehide it saw you yeah there. i didn't rehide yeah now the werewolf technically has partial cover now so uh this guy would have to move into oh, cover yep okay. so a partial cover gives plus two to ac i think just to let you know for technical oh, okay technical rules lawyer stuff the werewolf attacks okay. 21. i rolled a 17 hits you take eight points of damage Oof. the werewolf claw barrels down as the female werewolf is just, she her claws dig right into your stomach. It hurts tremendously. I'm gonna roll for dent. Uh, I have to roll for hit. I'm sorry, attack number two. Uh -uh. It you dodge out of the second one. Her other claw swipes down at you and it misses. It is now your turn. I'm gonna move the initiative counter down. Huh? Going to attack it. Right here. Uh, let's see what nice. you rolled. So here's the thing. You rolled a nat 20. Mm -hmm. So it's automatic critical. This is great. Okay. Just to kind of teach you a little bit about criticals. Mm -hmm. A critical against a named character who is not immune to exhaustion or fatigue takes a point of fatigue damage like you. You would take okay. a stack of fatigue because it's, it's a grittier house rule. Mm -hmm. But not only that, just to simplify it, you roll the dice and then we double it. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. What we do is actually you take max damage. I'm sorry. That's not how criticals work. I, I do want to simplify it a little bit, obviously, because uh -huh. you know I want to simplify the rules. So roll for damage normally. Uh -huh. But you do five damage <laughs> plus you do max damage. So your damage, max damage is eight plus four, 12. So you do 12 plus five, 17 damage. And as you strike out with your rapier behind this kind of cave stalagmite or whatever can i drive into it to push it back out into the open well how do you want to kill it um because this like is a finishing to, blow okay i would like to take my right here and drive it straight up into underneath its chin straight into its head her head her head her head and as you're doing that the the werewolf lets out a just a growl you know <laughs> you slowly see it transform back and she's tr slowly transforming as you're doing this and you're standing there and it's the head of the little girl with the tattered robe robes on what do you do what yeah. do you think i take my blade out and i wipe the blood off on the dress and i go nasty business that dark magic she's like and they look at you and they say the farmers will be happy to know that you save them. I'm sure that girl's family isn't happy about this, though. She's like, children die all the time in Zen. Now that the, the darkness has taken over, there's nothing we can do. What do you do? Hmm. Um... Is there anything on the girl? You want to search the cave? There's like tattered things and belongings around. Yes, I like to search It's the cave. dark. It's black and white in your dark vision. Okay. You, so you search the cave. You take your time. You have the other two help you as well. Search mm -hmm. the cave. Let me go to... You find a good amount of loot. This girl or monster doesn't make a difference to you. She must have been terrorizing this, these people for a while. 
And this is why you, I sent you something in Zoom chat. That's how I send out the treasure loot. Sweet. Oh, I see it. The druid, while you're doing this, you're like, she's actually identifying the items for you. Mm-hmm. So you can, but now there's three of you guys. And they look at you and they say, how are you going to split it? You did so, most of the work, but aren't you going to give us some too? We have to eat. What? What's the, um, what's PP? Platinum pieces. Platinum pieces. How many gold pieces in a platinum piece? Ten. So this is how money works. Just to kind of give you a brief idea of how money works. Mm -hmm. Three silver pieces make an ounce of silver. An ounce of silver. I want to write this down. Okay, sure. Three silver pieces. Yeah, this is how I think uh, I think of it at least. Three silver pieces. They're not a whole silver ounce piece. They make Uh a uh, an ounce of silver, and one ounce of silver makes um a day's labor okay okay so uh, like a hard day's labor is one ounce of silver or three silver pieces and again it just works in denominations of 10. platinum is the most expensive and rarest of metals and usually like the coins are stamped now the urks they use there's sometimes there's old coins of old kings and things long dead forgotten kings some of them are denominated with a symbol of darkness, you know, or just a dark coin that the Irks used for trading since the Irks tax everybody, you know. So some of the coins have different denominations on it, and that's what you find. This woman must have been, or girl must have been attacking, you know, people for months or something, you imagine. Mm-hmm. And it's only now she's been caught. With the famine throughout the land, though, like the wolves are starving. People are starving all the time. So they ask you, how do you want to split the treasure? What are you going to give them? Uh, So to split the coins, uh, I'm going to give them all of the copper pieces. I'll give them uh, each 15 of the silver pieces so 30 in total but 15 to each of them and then i'll give them each one gold piece and you're going to take the rest uh do you want to take the rust of daggers no no uh uh do they want uh do either of you want these daggers and they say those are junk and the druids are like i can't even use that she's like i don't even know what i would use that for Oh, and then I'll, I can actually I'll give I'll give each of them two gold pieces. Yeah. Generous, thank you. They said, "Let's head back to town." Okay. So you know how to add this stuff to your character sheet? Uh, it's just the equipment, and I you go manage manage yeah. equipment. Yeah. And you manage. add so add these things, add the coins, add this stuff if you want to add it. And since we play with encumbrance, that's based off your strength. And you know, you're pretty strong as a half, you know, half work, anyways. Mm-hmm. So you are, uh, you can probably carry a bit, and like fifty coins weigh a pound, I think. Okay. What if I don't see it? Should I just add just type it, it in like, manually? Okay. So we have the DMG now linked in, so you should be able to add almost anything. So you're heading back to sort of this hamlet town, that's nearby Stormbrook. I'll, you want me to wait till you finish adding the stuff? Uh, sure. No, I can add it later. It's not a big deal. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Do you, if you need to, you can copy paste whatever I did there into like a little notepad or something, I guess, or I can yeah. send it to you in Discord. I probably should start sending it to you guys in Discord, to be honest. Here, what I'll do is I'll whisper it to you. Okay. So that way the other players don't know all the fat loot you have. <laughs> so you, you, you're going to also split it. Remember how you split it. So this is the original loot that your character gave them. And then you get to split it the way you said. So you're not taking the rusted daggers. But you do take nope. you do take the two potions. Yep. And I take uh, 24 silver pieces. Yep. Uh, 151 gold pieces. And all of the... Monster business is an easy work. It's very dangerous, as you know. Like, mm-hmm. you just... You're off... You're wounded, too. And... You know, the druid actually heals you up a little bit as you're going back with some bending. Your wounds 
heal up and do it, but it's one of the many, it'll leave a scar. And okay. you, your, your body is mangled with scars mm. over the years of fighting muscles. So I enjoy that. That's, I pride myself. <laughs> you know, and then you look down at your prosthetic leg and you're like, yep. You know, like it that. happens, you know, sometimes you lose it, but the money is just too good. And the excitement and the thrill of the hunt is just so much. You make it back to this this uh, small hamlet city on your way to Stormbrook to try to find Van Richten. And the, the two say, the two husband and wife says, well, thank you so much, stranger. Hey, and the, thank and, you. And the uh, man goes, my lady, you've been more than kind to us. Thank you for your, all of your help with tracking and the actual attack. I hope that even as darkness takes this place, we can start to find the good people here. And the woman hands you uh, equivalent, like some basically some survival stuff that you probably could try to do on your own, but she just makes sure that you have enough. The fo people who know how to forage, like the wood elves, they don't really suffer from the famine as much, but they have to spend a lot of time, you know, foraging. She hands you one day's worth of rations. So you can add it to your character sheet if you want. She says, this will help you in your journey to Stormbrook. Good luck. Right. And as you right. see that, you know, as you guys are in this small hamlet, there's probably like a city of about a few hundred people. You know, a courier you see in the distance is riding in the town on their horses. Now, sometimes they ride with multiple horses, so they have a fresh horse to swap off. There's still a residual effect of what civilization was. And when an Urk or someone needs to send a message, you know, sometimes it's sent by raven, but other times it's, if it's urgent, it's sent by horse. If someone can pay enough. And then some people have magic and bending to send it across space and time and dimensions even. You know, across to even speak with the gods themselves. And this courier comes up to you, just kind of a commoner. It's a man, mm -hmm. dismounts, and he looks at you unmistakably, he knows who you are. The way you're dressed, the monster hunter gear. And he says, my lady, are you Esmeralda? That's me. And he hands you a letter. He pulls it out of his sack, gets back on his thing, and he says, thank you. And he hand, gets on the thing and does it. It's sealed. It has a seal. It's Van, it's Dr. Rudolph Van Richten's seal, your math, your uh, teacher and adopted father's seal that you've been looking for. Do you open it? Uh, I'm just out in the open right now. You're just in the kind of the town. He gets on the horse and gallops off. Yes, He's got more messages like to. to deliver. I would like to open this. I'm going to send you the message. It links to World Anvil, and I'll read it to you. It's a letter from Dr. Rudolph Van Richten. So when people use... Now, a seal can be stolen, but it's a special crafted thing. You know, usually gnomes or a skilled artisan will make the seal. To duplicate a seal is punishable by death, typically under the Lord's Law. But most of the kings and the irks, they don't really care what the humans do. But it's hard to duplicate it, you know, it's hard to forge it, but it can be forged. And the letter reads, Esmeralda, I know we had our falling out, but in my old age, I have my regrets. I should have not judged you for how you were born and your past and mother. My biggest regret is not slaying the devil himself. I'm not young anymore, and I need to finish off the greatest monster to have ever lived. Bull's champion, the devil himself. I will be in Barovia. Find me if you can. I will need your help. Your father, Dr. Rudolph Van Richten. You know what Bull, who Bull is, like Bull's champion. Bull is the true name of the darkness. It can't be spoken aloud unless you serve the darkness, though. And you know this from being a monster hunter and being in, like, the world and everything. Bool is the darkness's true name. And when someone speaks his name, the magic tied to that name is so powerful, something bad happens to that person. So no one speaks the name of the darkness. So that's why everybody just calls it the darkness itself. And you think to, your, and I, and you think to yourself, what is, who is Van Richten going after? What is this going on? And to your, in your mind, you're like, I need to find more help. 
if it, we're going to try to take on this monster. And, you're, and it's convenient because you're on your way to Stormbrook already. And you hope to yourself. And you just, you're, you're quickly moving. You leave the city. You've collected another 20 gold from the bounty, we'll say. Okay. So you're going to add that to your character sheet. From the yep. bounty, the farmers pay, paid and pulled you. That's actually the other half of the bounty, right? Because you got half up front. You didn't even want to take the job unless you got half mm -hmm. up front. So then you, as you're going to Stormbrook, you're thinking to yourself, I have to find more great warriors like myself, but finding great warriors is challenging in these times and you just hope that you can do it. Sweet. And that's the la yeah. that's the end of our adventure for today. I'm off to Stormbrook, let's go. <laughs>